This is Katy Perry at the Met Gala in 2024. Or is it? Recently, the entire celebrity fandom was shocked to see that this picture you see right now is an AI-generated picture of Katy Perry attending the Met Gala. Of course, if you look at it closely, you can see the mishappened heads of photographers, the weird angles and everything. But this was enough to fool even Katy Perry's own mother. So how are celebrity images like this generated? Today, I'll break down how this was done and explain all the tools you need for it so you can edit your own images and show your friends how you attended the Met Gala. Let's go. First off, this tutorial is for intermediate stable diffusion users. So if you're a beginner, I've got an awesome course on Udemy for beginners, which is now on a discount. And there are plenty of tutorials on this channel as well. So feel free to watch any of them. Method one, using stable diffusion and LoRa's. Now the first method is the easiest method to try. In whatever UI that you're running, make sure to load up any stable diffusion model that is good training. In this case, I've used Epic Realism. An SD 1.5 model I still believe is very perfect and can even beat SDXL in some instances. The original stable diffusion model is trained on images of celebrities. So if I go here and type a prompt with the specific words of the celebrity I want, in this case, Emma Watson, I can generate a decent art of her with good results. But still, this doesn't resemble her very closely. In cases like these, we can use LoRa's. I've done an extensive tutorial on LoRa's, so if you're new, check that out. If you go to a site like Civit AI, you can see lots of LoRa's trained on celebrities. In this case, I can download a LoRa like this, reload my window, and rewrite that prompt and keep the settings the same. When using these LoRa's, always use the model weights recommended in the Civit AI page. In this case, I'm going to use 0 0.7. All right, that didn't go well. Let's reduce the weight a little bit. And there you go. This resembles Emma Watson much more closely, but it still isn't perfect. But you might get a perfect image because the success of the image is heavily dependent on the LoRa, and the results of the LoRa is heavily based on how it was trained. But if you are in the didn't get good enough results gang, then we'll move to step two. Method two, inpainting. I cannot stress the potential of inpainting enough. So rather than talking about it, let me show it to you. To use this method, you need three things. First, load a model that is good for inpainting. I've chosen the epic realism inpainting model I've used for my inpainting tutorial. Next, make sure you have a good image with lighting like this. And third, make sure you have the Roop extension installed. The Roop extension is a face swap extension you can get from this URL and then installed via the extensions tab. If you want a detailed tutorial of Roop, it is available on my channel as well. Now load up your image and scroll down below to the Roop extension that appears right here. Click on it and load the image you want to swap the face with. Make sure to click on the enable option right here. Now scroll up and inpaint over the subject's face. Make sure her hair doesn't get captured since that would be rather messy. Now auto select the width and height of this using the button right here and hit generate. Voila, there's our face perfectly blended. Now this still isn't realistic since Emma Watson is usually slimmer than this. So we load the image into the inpaint tab, inpaint over the body like this using a larger brush. Just make sure to capture her clothes too. Then go up and type slim body white dress. Hit generate and there you go. Come on, give this to a normal person and ask if this is real or fake, and they'll say this is real. Did you realize the power of inpainting? Please make sure to use these tools ethically, because with AI, we get a huge responsibility on ourselves to use these tools only for ethical uses. But hey, taking a picture near your dad's old car and then inpainting that to a Mercedes-Benz S-Class is perfectly legal, so feel free to do that as a tutorial. Method three, removing background. If you really don't have a good background, then inpainting backgrounds can be really hard. So in those cases, it's best to remove the background and foreground. How to do this? If you still have that loaded image in the inpainting tab, click on this ruler icon to send it to the extras tab. If you're using a completely new image, make sure to load that to the extras tab. Next, install the Stable Diffusion Web UI RemBG extension. RemBG stands for Remove Background. You can get it from this link I add down below in the description, but this usually should come in bundled with WebUI itself. 
after you install it, you'll get a Remove Background option down below in the Extras tab. Click on U2 Net P, which is really good at separating people from the background. If you want to do some upscaling, you can do that here as well. But if you don't want to, hit Generate. And there you go. My background got removed instantly. Now you can use a tool like Canva or Photoshop to add a new background and then resize and angle it accordingly. Method 4. In painting new subjects. Here's the last and most awesome magic trick. Say you have an image like this with proper height and width. You can literally in-paint something into existence just by having the proper prompts. Alright, so my computer froze up because the image was having some heavy dimensions, but this is still enough to show you the process. So I typed the prompt and negative prompt. Prompt is basically what I want. Then you can see I've in-painted the area where I want the image, and then I have chosen the proper size. And I got this. Perfect, isn't it? It exactly feels like she was right there at the moment. And then you can pretty much guess what we do. We go to Roop, select the face we want, and paint over the face area, and hit Generate. It's taking three minutes, so let me pause the screen recording so the generation will happen faster. All right, voila! You can see her face was swapped, and there you go. We have a celebrity attending the red carpet event. So those are basically some ways we can reverse engineer how the Katy Perry photo was made. Once again, please make sure to use these tools ethically. The reason for this tutorial is to, one, break the mystery around how the Katy Perry picture was made so it doesn't appear like a magic trick, and two, to teach you about in-painting and basically speak about the important settings of it. Thanks for watching. And if you want to dive deep into in-painting or stable diffusion, I've got an awesome course up on Udemy, and I also have tons of tutorials on this channel. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you all in the next video.